What's going on guys? I am back with a question for you. Do you play mobile games? Do you want to play mobile games? If the answer is yes, and you've had to experience the cruel master that is Gotcha, then you may not need to watch this, or maybe you're looking for something new, and maybe you haven't tried any of the games I'm about to talk about. If so, stick around, see what you think. Maybe you're in your curiosity will be piqued. If the answer is no, run. Run while you still can. Uh, then come check out a couple games that I want to recommend to you to get get your toes wet. Stick Just to stick a finger into the vast ocean that is gotcha and mobile games and maybe find one that you really enjoy along the way. So uh, with that said, we're going to jump into five games that I think are great to try out for your first time playing mobile games. Now before I jump into those five games, I do have a couple honorable mentions, games that I want to bring up that maybe you could try, or if you've already tried these five, maybe one of these will be of your interest, we'll say. Uh, I'm not going really in-depth on any of them, there's just five quick games that I think would be worth mentioning. The first game on this honorable mentions list is going to be Dragalia Lost. Dragalia Lost is by Psy Games and Nintendo, and it is a very, very fun game. Honestly, I would have easily put this in my five choices if it weren't for one critical factor. The game is going into its end of service. In about a month of, from recording of this video, maybe two I believe, the game will no longer be around. But that being said, it is a very good game, so keep your eyes out for maybe something else from that property in the future. We can hope. But also, you have a couple months to try it out and play a pretty good game if you want. Second game on this honorable mentions list is going to be King's Raid. I wanted to put King's Raid in the 5 and it was a contender, but the reason I didn't is because its state is in question right now. I'm not sure if the game is shutting down or going into a massive update with the inevitable and upcoming launch of King's Raid 2. When I looked into it, uh, it said that it's going to be in the same app, the same game is going to become King's Raid 2, but I just wasn't sure and I haven't seen an update in a while, so I could have researched it more. I didn't, and at the end of the day, I think the games that I did put on the list are probably better options. That being said, King's Raid is a very fun game. It's got a lot of great characters. It's very, very enjoyable. So maybe go give it a give it a try. And when King's Raid 2 comes out, maybe I'll put a video on up about trying it out then. Third game I'm bringing up in the honorable mentions is going to be Genshin Impact. I don't think you can be on the internet or Twitch or Twitter or anything like that nowadays without hearing or seeing something about Genshin Impact. There should be very little I need to say about Genshin Impact, so go play Genshin Impact if you haven't. And I want to say the only reason it's not uh, in the list and on honorable mentions is because the majority of the player base will be playing this on PC and like console and not on mobile. So, despite being available to play on mobile, I don't really consider this a mobile game per se. So, I do and I don't, but Genshin Impact, great game, go try it out. Recently updated as of last night with 2.7, so yeah, check it out. Fourth game on the honorable mention list, uh, real quick, is going to be that time I got reincarnated as a slime, Isekai Memories. This game at launch was, well, pretty bad in all things considered, but as of last month, it celebrated its six month anniversary and went all out with great characters, uh, great updates, great quality of life. Honestly, in six months, the game has made a lot of improvements. And if it continues on this track, I will happily say it's a game that people should play and is a good game. At the very least, if you like the IP that is Tensura uh, Slime, definitely check it out it's it's a fun game it, it it just logging in just playing very very lightly very casually over a few months will cause your account to build up tremendously over the free stuff they give and the free characters and whatnot so 
worth a shot. I'm really excited to see what it looks like at a year and hopefully being able to recommend it more openly and vigorously for people. It's a good game. Give it a shot. It has improved a lot in six months and I hope it continues to do so. The last game I'm going to bring up in my honorable mentions is going to be a relatively new game on the global side of things. It came out, I want to say, like four or five days ago. It's not even a full week into service. And that's Counterside. I downloaded this game and on a whim, really, just to scratch that gotcha itch. And lo and behold, I've been playing this game almost nonstop for like four days now. It's really fun. Normally not the type of game that I enjoy because it's not very active in its gameplay. But that being said, it's just really fun and there is an intricacy to the team building and gameplay as you get a little higher up in levels and stuff. It's it's good. There's a lot to be said about it. I'm probably going to be doing a video specifically for it here soon. So maybe keep an eye out on that. But that being said, I definitely think this game is worth trying out, especially now, whereas of recording this video, it is still like new, fresh on the market. And there's a lot of free stuff being given. So, hey, go get free stuff. Scratch that gotcha itch. I want to start off by saying there is no specific order to these games I'm going to be recommending. I'm just recommending some games that I think are enjoyable and you should probably consider checking out. And the first one I'm going to bring up is, you can see, is Grand Blue Fantasy. Grand Blue Fantasy came out in 2014 and is only available on the JP App Store. However, the game does have an inbuilt English language that you can select and play, so download an APK from something like QApp or APK Pure or something like that. Uh, if you want, though, I would recommend just opening up your browser on your mobile phone and playing it from that, because uh, the game's massive and will take up so much memory. So this way you're not having to devote all that memory. So you can still make an account and play it just like you're playing from the app, from a browser, on your phone, or even on your PC. That being said, Grim Blue Fantasy, like I said, probably, no definitely, the oldest game on this list that I'm recommending, being almost 10 years old. And in that 10 years, it's always stayed relatively high in like top grossing on the JP App Store. It's got a very large community a lot of people love this game play this game enjoy the characters gameplay story all of those things there's even an anime for this so if you don't watch the story when you play you can go watch the anime the community i have not been as in touch with myself because i don't play the game that much i play it on and off here and there usually when anniversary or something else is coming up that catches my attention or I just kind of have that itch to play myself but I do know it has a large community and from my own experience with friends that play and some other people within the community that is Grand Blue Fantasy it's a generally very friendly and helpful community I mean with any gotcha community it can have its own toxicity and toxic players and that's not even just gotcha that's the internet and games in general right so that being said I think with a game that is almost 10 years old, it has covered so much quality of lives that it's hard to even say what quality of lives it might need. For that, you would probably have to ask a more experienced player, because I don't have the largest amount of playtime in this game myself. I will say, uh, as with all these games, I will talk about its gotcha system. So if I go over here to the draw, Grand Blue has a pity system in the game of... 300 pulls or 30 10 pulls and you can pity a character and that costs 90k of these rainbow crystals here and uh, for the majority of people would tell you wait for something like what's up right now which is a gala to summon because during a gala you have double rates the standard rate for an SSR in the gotcha on Grand Blue is 3%, so on a Gala you're looking at 6% SSR rates. That also being said that you're drawing in a pool that has it doesn't have characters, it has weapons and summons. Now characters are attached to those weapons. If you get a weapon you don't have that comes with a character, you get that character too. As I said, the game does have a pity system of 30 tin pulls. So you can go in and select the weapon that you want, and it'll show you the character that you get. So 
really you're pulling for the character that you want, but I mean, you're also getting weapons and such along the way. So yeah, it takes 300 sparks and you get one spark for every single pull. So 10 for a multi pull. So there you go, 300 sparks and you can spark or pity the character you want. Like I said, most people will tell you to wait for a Gagala where the rates are doubled and there are better premium characters to get. So I would also tell you that because that is smart. And they would also tell you to wait until you can pity before you summon because you know, you're never guaranteed anything in gotcha. And that general rule of advice probably stands across any gotcha game, not just Grand Blue Fantasy. With a game that is almost 10 years old, like on top of a large community it is as I said, it is always almost consistently a top grossing game. There is a time when anybody that played gotcha games knew that like the top gotcha game on the market was without a doubt Fate Grand Order. This game has almost always given Fate Grand Order a run for its money. Back then, currently it actually passes Fate if I'm not mistaken. Could be mistaken. I haven't kept up with Fate in a while myself, but that shows you it makes money, and a game that makes money is going to keep being around. It's going to, you know, get updates. You're going to get new characters. You're going to get things like that. Like I said, the game being 10 years old would normally, you know, throw some questions on that maybe, but I've heard nothing about this game slowing down. Uh, none of my friends have told me anything about this game slowing down, and even if it does, there's still so much content in this game being as old as it is, there's plenty for you to try and do. Also, if you like the game, there are other uh, products with the Grand Blue name coming out, like Grand Blue Links, I believe it's called, and there's Grand Blue Versus on Steam. This is a large, large community of players and now even becoming games that it's not just a gotcha game to get your, you know, feet sunk into but like just a whole community built around grand blue to dive into so i think with that being said it's definitely worth checking out this game uh seeing if you like it i can tell you the characters are all like top top design it, among all the gotchas i've played some of the best design characters i've ever seen are found right here in grand blue fantasy great characters great art it's so it always looks nice i realize we could go over the intricacies of this game more and say more about this game like how your character your insert character has different classes you can equip and you level them up to unlock advanced versions and then you build teams based off of elements and then combinations of skills and then equipment and then the summon boards and then all these things but i don't want every game on here to just take a massive amount of time so i just want to give you a little bit of background and just kind of show a little tiny glimpse of what the gameplay is like so that maybe you'd be interested in checking it out so there's always more i could say about any of these games really some of them i haven't played in depth myself but i have played i do enjoy and i'm comfortable recommending them to you as a game so I'm sorry if I don't show a whole lot with Grand Blue here or some of the other ones, but I just want to try and keep this compact. And yeah, so just with that general background information, just giving you a little glimpse of what the game's like, maybe it'll pique your interest. Maybe you can go look into an actual content creator for this game and find out something more and see if it really is something you like. But I just wanted to recommend a few games that you would potentially enjoy or potentially satiate that gotcha appetite all that said this has been grand blue fantasy and we'll move right on to the next one next up we have epic seven epic seven a four-year-old game releasing in 2018 if you've been on youtube and you play play mobile games or you watch anime you've probably seen some kind of commercial or something advertising epic 7. it's got some beautiful beautiful old animations which we will see here shortly in the gameplay this game is got a very large community i'm pretty sure you could find so many content creators on youtube that would be able to help you or answer questions or anything like that and then on top of that you have a 
pretty active Reddit that you can reference if you would like there as well. So more players, more people to uh, potentially help you. It's always nice to have. The game is almost consistently always in the top grossing on the uh, English global uh, app store. So a game that makes money sees a long lifespan and yeah, this game makes money. This game makes money. Usually top 10 grossing uh, overall in its respective categories. So, you know, I think you're pretty good and safe saying if you want to play this game, you have some time to play it. The game does fe feature a gacha with a 46.75% chance of being a hero and a 53.25% chance of being an artifact. Artifacts being things you equip on your characters that have effects. If you've played a game like FGO, then it's equivalent to Craft Essence, really. The game is not the nicest in those rates because your chance of it being a five star out of those chance of being a hero artifact is a 1% for a five star hero and 1.75% for a five star artifact. It's not very high. Among all the games I'm going to recommend to you, this is easily the lowest rate of pulling a five star. However, it does probably have one of the nicer pity systems in the game with a 12 multi plus one single pity, so 605 bookmarks or 11,500 sky stones. So you could get your character, you know, save and spend those resources wisely. Uh, that being said, even with those low rates, you can get the characters pretty early and while a lot of older players will say do singles, I cannot verify whether that is a proven you have a better shot or what, but I know when the game launched you could only do singles and the multis was something imp implemented as a quality of life down the road. So I'm not sure. I do multis maybe just because I like multis and I don't like clinking through singles. But maybe do singles and you know singles make sense you get what you want you're out you don't have to waste those extra summons right the game does have a lot of different game modes to play you have you know your resource grinds you have the abyss you have your hunts you have a tower you have a hall of trials you have a labyrinth and then you have events right now there is a re-zero collab going on you can just log in and get a five star ram for free and you have another five six days to summon for rim and then amelia's up for summons so if you really like re-zero and you want a game with them you can go check this game out and get yourself some waifus right the game also has arena it also has story and it's a long large story there is plenty of content and things to do as you can see i'm only rank 25 because of how little i have played this game and there's so much going on so much to do it's crazy so many different types of summons elemental specific summons mystic summons covenant summons here we'll do a mystic summon single i didn't get anything except this guy that i already have but we're gonna keep going there's a lot to do in Epic 7. Epic 7 is very, very interesting, very, very fun, and like, great character designs. Characters have very flashy ults. This man turns into a dragon and then steps on every enemy. What else is there to say? It's, it's a good game. I really do enjoy this game, and, you know, I slept on it longer than I should have. There's a lot, a lot to do. So maybe check it out. Maybe find yourself a new favorite game, a new fun game to play. I'm not going to go into the specifics of the gear or how you power up characters or anything like that. I just want to show off some of the characters as I tell you that I have, I slept on this game for the first couple years it came out. I made an account, uh, but never really played. And having actually been playing for the last couple weeks, wish I hadn't slept on it. It's a good game. Uh, there are some quality of lives that I think could be improved and I would very much like to see improved, but the game has shown a history of, you know, updating those quality of lives, giving nice improvements. So I'm excited to see 
when those quality next quality of lives come out that i might be wanting that might make the game more enjoyable to me personally and yeah as i'm flipping through characters you can see there is a variety there's so many characters there's bound to be one that you enjoy that you like low star or high so give epic 7 a shot hopefully you have some good luck and you find another really good game to enjoy and play so the next game I'm going to bring up and talk about is Ark Knights. This one's probably popped up on your radar if you've looked around at mobile games before. It came out two years ago in 2020 and has done really well for itself, all things considered. It does have a fairly large community and a fairly active community. I will say among all the games I would recommend to you, it probably has notoriously or infamously, maybe famously, I don't know how you want to put it, but probably one of the more toxic communities that you can find, but you know, that's any game or internet community out there. There's some or a lot of toxicity to be had, so just be careful with the community in this one, I will say, but it does have a large one and there are some good people out there who will definitely be able to help you and a lot of great guides for clearing content. I'll give Ark Knights one thing that most gacha games don't do and that's they build content around the low star, low rarity characters because those are the characters everybody will have. So when you pull those five stars and those six stars, they just end up being a huge boon to what you're trying to accomplish and not necessary ever because that's not what the game's built around doing. As you can see, the game does employ this tower defense-esque gameplay, uh, whereas once you three star a mission, you can auto deploy and it will auto do the missions for you, which is really nice. Tower Defense, not really my go-to gameplay style, but you know, every now and then I do enjoy a good Tower Defense, and it's definitely probably the most different among the games I will recommend to you today in terms of gameplay because it is that Tower Defense system instead of some kind of turn-based or RPG-esque system. So with Arknights' gotcha, with what it calls its headhunting, you have a 2% chance of pulling a 6 star character, an 8% of pulling a 5 star, and then 50% for 4, 40% for 3, 1 and 2 stars are not obtained through headhunting, so you don't have to worry about all of those being in there. It does have a light guarantee in that in your very first 10 pulls, you are guaranteed at least a 5 star operator somewhere. After that, the only thing it has is after 50 pulls, your chances of a 6 star operator will increase by 2% all the way up to 100% until you get it at 100%. So that's 74 pulls and you're 100% guaranteed, or sorry, that's 99 pools at 99 pools you are guaranteed a six star operator now it only uses a pity system on limited banners so with limited characters which those are the ones you would rather have a pity system all things considered where every single pool gives you a single distinction kind of like how grand blue gives you a single spark and it takes, I want to say, 300 of those to get yourself the guaranteed characters. So, that's only 30 multis to get yourself a guaranteed limited operator. That's pretty good, uh, all things considered. Especially considering its base pity is 99 pools to guarantee a 6 star. So, that's nice at least. Again, with the gameplay, the game has a nice system of autoing on the missions you've finished and it just follows the strategy you use so you use a good strategy the auto will use a good strategy so that does you know allow you to experiment and in of itself that is one of the better things about the game is it's strategy it, like at the end of the day it's strategy strategy will make and break your gameplay experience with this game you have a good strategy, the mission will go well, you'll succeed, you'll get three stars. You have a poor strategy, well, you may not succeed. 
and there are so many guides out there so many people that make guides that will help you get through some of the hardest content in the game using the lowest rarity characters in the game so there's always always a way to find help out there and i'd be remiss not to mention the incredible art and character design on the characters in art knights the art for art knight is so so good the character design is so so good so there's bound to be a character out there you like uh i'm sure i'm so sure you'll find one that you go yo that's my waifu or yo that's my husbando fantastic designs fantastic characters and even the story is pretty good it's not the best out there it's not the greatest but it's pretty dark it's pretty good and uh i say it's even enjoyable so you know go give it a shot check it out uh good luck because it'll test your brain in terms of spending money in the game there are a handful of options for getting packs and things like that that you can get to kind of help you get a head start but overall not a huge selection for spending your money you're really kind of limited to spending it on your premium currency resources and your first time buying each one you get double and if i'm not mistaken these do get reset once maybe twice a year on this double so that's nice i guess still a lot of money to be spent to get these a hundred dollars for your biggest pack and i don't remember the exact exchange of how many pulls and whatnot that is but i don't think it's enough to guarantee you anything except maybe on a limited banner and that's only if you have the double going on but every now and then you do get a really good pack as well so you know keep your eyes open for that if you're a money spender for a decent pack with some uh, nice things going on there the game also does feature a i guess you can call it a light pity as well Whereas you'll get these distinctions that you get for summoning on characters or pulling characters for the first time and whatnot. And once you get so many, you can exchange them for a free five or six star that randomly changes depending on the banner that's up. So as you can see, I am getting ever so close to having enough for a free six star once the one i want comes available in this little exchange store so that's always a nice little quality of life help you get some of those six stars help you maybe get that waifu or husbando that isn't limited but is just eluded you for so long as is my case <sighs> so the next two games i'm going to talk about are different from the last three in that they are not independent like properties they're not unique characters per se or anything like that they are based off an anime based off of an existing property and mobile games based off of that that being said i do not think you need to have played or been a fan of the existing property existing anime or games to enjoy these mobile games i think the game themselves will speak will speak for themselves so the first one is going to be Seven Deadly Sins Grand Cross. This game is two years old on the global market. It's Japanese uh, Korean version being a year older than that. Um, give or take a few months. And while the content is almost in sync, there is about a two week gap. So you have a little bit of foreshadow to know what's coming to the global version. Which can be nice, you know, what uh, what's upcoming and what you need to save those hard-earned diamonds for. The game has, since coming out in global, been very, very successful. It has stayed very, very high in the top grossing list. The game does have a fairly large and active community. There are people that stream it on Twitch. There are a lot of YouTubers that cover 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross. If it had any immediate flaw, I would point out is that the company Netmarble that you know oversees it is a little bit money grubbing. They they really like to make you want to spend money and wail on characters because characters nowadays that are super limited have unique abilities when you get their ults up so you get so many dupes of them or they get this when you get so many dupes of them you want to keep summoning you want to keep spending money to buy crystals and summon it's really annoying that being said the game 
is incredibly fun. It is a great game system. There are so many games that are coming out or have come out that try to sort of emulate this system, this gameplay, the, the gameplay of this game. It is a standing point, a staple for a fun gameplay system. If you were to introduce anybody to mobile games, if you were to tell them to just play a game for how fun it is, this would be the game you point them to because it's a fun game. The gameplay is really good. And it is a shame that it does have a lot of limited and semi-limited units nowadays. And the company really likes to try and get money. And that being said, buying straight up diamonds is pretty awful as far as the rate of diamonds you get for the money you spend and how much that accounts to pity and summons. It has a handful of really good packs that it releases, so that's really nice. But that being said, it's... I wouldn't encourage spending a whole lot of money on this game, but there are some good packs that, you know, are worth the price, and I wouldn't tell you not to because they're pretty good. Moving on from that, the game is really fun. Like I said, it's got a really simple but really, I guess, strategic gameplay to it in that, you know, how do the cards combine? How do you use the cards? How do you form the team based off passives, abilities, stats, all of these things? You know, three units with a back row, a fourth unit, and it is based off Seven Deadly Sins, the manga and anime, but it also has had collabs with other games like uh, Tensura, like ReZero. It's had a collab with Stranger Things, of all things. This is, of these five, one of the games I have played a lot and I have spent a pretty penny on. Because it's a fun game at the end of the day and that that's hard, you know, to take away from it. It's really, really enjoyable. It's got a really large community. It's, you know, got some cool people that you can meet and watch and the characters are really cool. Like the character designs are great the costumes which are unique and things you don't normally see in the like anime or manga look really good you know i could say negative things about seven deadly sins and that's probably because i've played seven deadly sins so much and i think that speaks for itself because i've played it so much i can see the flaws in it but at the end of the day i keep playing it i keep coming back to play it it's a fun game and it's a game that i would happily recommend to people for just being fun i will say though it does do good with quality of life and they try to keep putting out good quality of life updates they could really use to streamline the awakening and level up and uh limit breaking process it could use some streamlining to make it a little bit quicker uh the resources for super awakening could be a little bit more plentiful the gear could be a little bit more plentiful the not the gear itself but the awakening stones for gear could be a little bit more plentiful in game and i could even say above all if anything needs to be made more plentiful it's the ssr pendants especially with level 100 around the corner as we know because of jp we need more of those and i think the way you get them in game is really really minuscule all things considered now if you've been playing for a long time you have a lot but for new players it's a lot man it's a lot new players have a lot of grinding and catching up to do but that being said I still think it's worth playing. It's still fun to play. I think there could be and should be more PvE content in the game. Something a little bit more interesting in terms of PvE and not necessarily difficult, but just fun to do. I don't think difficult equals fun and I think there could be more fun PvE content to do. Like I said, I, this being as one of the games I actually play a whole lot on this list, I can, you know, ramble on for a long time about this game. But I will also say, uh, the gacha is... Out of the ones I've talked about thus far, it might potentially be the better one. It has a 3% SSR rate, 4% on your festival banners with those limited characters where the rate up character on a regular banner has a 0.5% out of that 3% of being drawn and all the rest of the characters are between like 0 0.2, 0 0.25%. 
And then on your festival banners, it's 0.25% for whatever character is rated up and potentially the other festivals, though not always. And 0.2% give or take a little bit for every other SSR on the banner. So, you know, you getting SSRs is not necessarily hard in that regard, but you know, it's still low enough that you're gonna get screwed over in those, uh, in those draws. So, you know, what can you do about that? Uh, also, the game does have a pity system. It almost every banner, nowadays every banner, has some kind of pity. Whether it's the step up pity, which is 242 diamonds to guarantee yourself the character, which honestly is the best pity the game does, but does it very, very, very rarely. The standard banner pity is 600 diamonds or 20 tin pools to get yourself a guaranteed new character from that banner. And then the festival standard is 900 diamonds to guarantee yourself uh, the new festival character, which is 30 summons. That seems pretty typical across a lot of games, so I think game's definitely worth giving a try whether you're a fan of seven deadly sins or not i think you could definitely enjoy this game i think the characters are really good coming up in the next week and a half two weeks is anniversary for the game which means we're getting a new festival character and the banner as we have seen thanks to jp is loaded with good characters for starting off on top of a free summons going on right now that can give you one of the best festivals in the game and for 30 diamonds on top of the 14 free summons one of the best support characters in the game it's a good game all the negatives i can say i say because i do enjoy the game so no matter what i could say about the company i can say a lot of negative things about the company the game itself is good and it's very fun and i think it's worth giving a shot so maybe give it a shot and uh let me know what you think you can definitely look back on my channel and see plenty of summon videos and other things about this game i have made also want to point out the game has more content than what i'm showing on the screen for this video there is you know raid bosses quote unquote there are event bosses though those kind of just get rehashed they could use a little bit of a spicing up you have final boss though that hasn't been around in a while which is a more difficult point based boss you have guild bosses which is also a point based boss but not as difficult as like what final boss is supposed to be you have pvp the game plays heavily on pvp it, the pvp does carry this game in a lot of ways and the pvp is fun if a little toxic at times but i mean i think with any pvp game meta and toxicity are always going to be a thing and always going to play a part so that's kind of unavoidable but it can still be fun especially when you use a really niche team that you kind of thought and put together and plays well and you're able to beat some of those meta of teams because of good RNG or because of skill it it always feels nice so the final game I'm going to talk about really should come as no surprise if you've been around my channel for a while or you've watched my uh, mobile gaming library videos and that's the city of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia like seven deadly sins this is a game that has that is based on something else it is based on the Final Fantasy series and it's based on bringing together the characters from all the different Final Fantasies into one game. If you play the Dissidia, Fighter, Brawlers, whatever you want to call them, uh, you have that idea in your head. That being said, I don't think you necessarily need to be a Final Fantasy fan to enjoy this game. And I have talked a friend into playing that, you know, was a casual Final Fantasy fan. They've played maybe two Final Fantasies, but do enjoy this game. I think without saying anything else without just put without you know going over all of the this and that and whatnot just pure thoughts on this game 100 percent peak mobile gotcha game design a gotcha game that doesn't that doesn't make you rely on the gotcha man that's fantastic that's great how could you not enjoy that <laughs> you don't have to worry about being completely screwed by the gotcha now, as the game has gotten older, there is a little bit more, you know, RNG related to that gotcha. There is a little bit more to rely on that gotcha for, but that may change. You know, those things that are currently gotcha limited may not always be gotcha limited. 
In fact, the best weapons in the game for an individual character you can technically get for free because you can get tokens in exchange for them by playing the game. The strongest weapons in the game, period, are only gotten by playing the game, not even in the gacha. Right now, there are only two types of weapons out of the five, six weapon types that you can only get in the gacha. And while they are important weapons to get, you don't have to summon for all the others so you can focus on those. It, it, it helps. It really does. The gacha itself does have one of the most generous gachas. Uh, as far as rates go, you have a roughly 10.5 to 11% chance of pulling a 5 star or higher weapon. Now that's divided of course into that first weapon which is the best four individual characters being a 0.1% and then the lower tier weapons like uh, the basic weapons that are 5 star four individual characters being 7.25% of that still it's a high five star pool rate so that's really good the pity uh i think could be updated personally where the game is at with two types of limited weapons in the pool but with 300 tokens so 75k gems 15 multi pulls you can get the ld or the x i would recommend the ld because you can get x tokens by playing and you're more likely to pull an x but if you already have the LD and you just need that X for a character, you can do that too. 400 tokens will get you a force weapon, though the global version of the game does not have force weapons just yet. We do get them in the next month and a half. So I felt it prudent to mention that. And then 500 tokens will give you that character's burst weapon, which are big, which are flashy, which you've seen my Noctis do in the gameplay already. The game does a great job of quality of life, of implementing small things to make the game play better, more enjoyable, go faster, run smoother. It's on top of the quality of life. The gameplay, really good, really simple. And you know, the game has so many different levels of difficulty and challenges and some of them are really annoying. Some of them are really well designed. There's a variety, let me tell you that. And there's a lot of backlog content to do for a new player. The game is overly generous to their free-to-play players. I couldn't even tell you so much what the packs and prices are like, though I can't say there are decent packs and prices. Uh, in terms of the bonus stuff you get, in terms of the gems, well, that leaves a lot to be desired, so to speak. Most people don't spend money so in this game be because it's so generous with the free-to-play currency and the free-to-play resources like you don't have to spend money you really don't most people probably don't the game is not top 10 grossing or top 15 i don't even think it's top 20 so to speak or uh last time i checked because you don't need to spend money in the game. Now, it does stay in like top 50 at least because it has a large player base and, you know, people are going to spend money on a game they enjoy, right? Especially in Gotcha. And, and with that, the community is rather large. I don't know about its YouTube presence, but I do know there's a big Reddit, a lot of people on Reddit, and there's a lot of community members in a community Discord. There's a lot of community members that run community fan sites to help you figure out how to do the difficult fights, to help you break down how to play characters, to help you, you know, figure out how to do this or figure out how to do that. The resources that the community have compiled and put out there are so numerous. There's so many ways to just find something or find the information you're looking for. It's a great game. It's a game I have praised time and again on my YouTube and my Twitch and on Twitter, and I will continue to praise it because it's a fun, game like I sometimes don't consider it a mobile game or a gotcha game because I play it like it's a regular game it's really really enjoyable it's just fun there's always something to do there's always an event going on there's always a challenge fight up there's always co-ops to run there's no end of content to play in this game and there's no end of free resources it feels like sometimes the game is four years old, having come out in 2018. Uh, the JP game roughly a year older than, or the JP version roughly a year older than that, but it will probably keep going for a long time. 
in global we're at 156 different characters from across all of the different final fantasies and i think jp is about four or five more characters than us and there's still so many they can pull and add into this game so many there's some obvious picks they haven't added heck four years into this game and we still don't have riku from final fantasy 10. what's that about as far as the story goes, I think for a Final Fantasy fan, you will love this story because they do really, really well about characters staying true to themselves, acting as they would in situations. Uh, the interactions are fantastic. The references and Easter eggs are fantastic. You're not a Final Fantasy fan. You've never played Final Fantasy. You will still be able to learn about these characters and enjoy these characters and their interactions and who they are and potentially hate some of these characters because of who they are and i think without the background of final fantasy knowledge it does leave a little bit to desi be desired in some characters cases so i think even if you're not a final fantasy fan you can enjoy the story i think it is enjoyed more by final fantasy fans that goes without saying but even if you're not it's a great story it's really good a lot of the references and easter eggs might go over your head but it would still be fun still be enjoyable and maybe it'll make you go huh maybe i should play final fantasy to which i say if you haven't played final fantasy play final fantasy really what are you waiting for play final fantasy those games are great like almost all of them so those have been my five mobile games that i would recommend for any newcomer to try out if you're looking to try out a mobile game or if you played a lot of mobile games and you just want something new to play and you haven't tried one of them, try them out. There are a lot of ways I could have probably made this video better and yeah, I'm looking at them now, kind of looking back, thinking maybe I should have done more. Maybe I should have scripted it out. But this is a video I really wanted to make. I really wanted to put these games out there for maybe somebody to try if they haven't and to hopefully find a game that they enjoy. I think mobile games can be really fun and I think there's something that can be enjoyed. The gacha sucks, the gacha is annoying, it's toxic, it's pain inducing at times really. But that aside, the games themselves can be really fun. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm sorry for all my stuttering and probably poor quality. I, like I said, could have probably done better and hopefully will continue to improve. I strive to improve at this. And uh, yeah, if you've watched all the way through, thank you for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe. Look at what's coming next. Like I said, I have a video on Counterside probably coming out soon. So if you're wanting to hear or see a little bit more about that, uh, stay tuned for that. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Come check me out on Twitch where the night of this recording and maybe upload, I'll be trying out V Rising with my buddy Nat. Or if not, if it gets uploaded later, then I will be streaming every Monday and Tuesday. I can almost guarantee Wednesday through Friday. It's always in the air, but I try to stream at least once more if I can. And I play mobile games. I play RPGs. I play Apex. I play all kinds of games. So yeah, come check us out. If, but at the very least, hit the like button. Uh, subscribe here on YouTube. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for listening and uh, I hope you found a game worth checking out and that you enjoy So yeah, we'll see you next time guys. Peace